Hello, and welcome back to our study of Pinine Halacha, the teachings of Rebbe Eliezer Malamed, Shlita. I hope everyone had an enjoyable Shabbos and weekend, lovely weather here in the northeast of the United States. Yesterday, of course, celebrated here what's known as Mother's Day, although in Jewish tradition, every day is Mother's Day, so hope to all those that are blessed to have mothers, to be mothers, aspire to be mothers, that you had an enjoyable day. We begin a new topic, a new week, a new topic as we're getting closer to Shavuos, and we want to take the topic called Hachnasas Orchim, the mitzvah of welcoming guests. So here we go. One of the most important mitzvos that we find amongst the entire corpus of mitzvos that are interpersonal is the mitzvah of welcoming guests. And it's so important, this mitzvah, that the Torah dedicates many, many verses. When the Torah sometimes does not spend a lot of time speaking on topics, mitzvahs, or stories, but here the Torah spends a tremendous amount of ink, so to speak, to illustrate for us how particular and how in much detail Avraham Avinu, Abraham, of course, fulfilled this mitzvah of welcoming guests. So therefore, we have to peel back the layers, so to speak, and we have to look at the way that Avraham Avinu fulfilled this mitzvah. So the first instance that we have of this is three days after Avraham, in his late 90s, by the way, received a bris mila, while he was still recovering from this surgery, he goes to the front of his tent. He's not in his bedroom recovering. He's at the front looking for guests. This is the beginning of Parshas Vayera, of course. And as soon as he saw three men approaching, he forgot about his illness. And he gets up and he runs towards them. And he implores them to please stay and be his guests. Now let's look at the guests themselves. We know, of course, because we know the story, we're privy to the whole story, and then Avram Avinu learned at the end of the story that these were no ordinary men, but rather these were three angels. But when they were approaching him in the beginning of Parshas Vayera, it just says Anashim, and that's exactly what Avraham thought. They were just regular, simple people. Yisrael came furthermore, Misaprim Lanu Chachamenaz, as the Gemara in Bava Metziah tells us, Shehem Nidmulu Ka'aravim Anogim Lishtachavos Lafar Shabraglehem. They looked like locals who were idol worshippers, that they would always bow down to the dust at their feet. Min Sug Miguna B'Miuchad Shalavod Azara. And this was a particularly despised version of Avodah Zarah that certainly in the eyes of Avram Avinu, the monotheist, and to sort of rectify their ways, so Avram, the first thing he asks them to do is to wash their feet. He was worried that they would be worshipping the dust at their feet. In any event, this simple act, which takes these wayfarers, these guests, and it takes them from one level to the next, whether they're on a high level or a low level, this does not distract, it doesn't disturb Avraham. So you might think, oh, these are idol worshippers, maybe I shouldn't give them the time of day. Nevertheless, Avraham Avinu runs towards them. He brings them into his home, into his tent, with joy. He shechts animals for them. And he gives them butter and fat. Of course, we know that Rashi tells us how could they have basar b'cholav. An interesting story there. And after this incredible act of welcoming guests, of course, the angels reveal to Avram Avinu, that he's going to have a son named Yitzchak. 
We have a similar story that's told about the father of the Baal Shem Tov named Rebbe Yezer. He was very meticulous and he was very careful to try and bring guests whenever he could. And he would hire someone to stand at the edge of the city, the edge of the town, that he would invite to the house of the father of the Baal Shem Tov, Rebbe Yezer. He would invite them to his house, people who were poor, and he would feed them, and he would give them what to drink, and he would prepare a nice bed so that they could sleep. We're told that in the heavens, again in Hasidic stories, this is how it goes, in the heavens there was aroused a great simcha from these wonderful kind acts of Rebbe Yezer, until Satan himself came to prosecute, and he said, so it's too good to be true, says the Satan. We have to test him and see if his acts are purely for the sake of heaven. He wanted to test him. However, in the merit of this mitzvah in the heavens that he was always doing, so they had mercy on him, and they established that, you know, it's not the Satan who's going to test him, but it's going to be none other than Eliyahu HaNavi, Elijah the prophet. B'Shabbos, Achas, Achar, Tzorayim, so one Shabbos afternoon, Higil Beis HaShel Rebbe Yezer, Yehudi, Over, Oreach, Tarmilok, Sefo, Makalobi, Yado. A simple Jew shows up at his house. He has his pack with him. He has his walking stick. Mechalel Shabbos Gomor, someone who was clearly not keeping the Shabbos. Ukadeshia Barusha Shabbos lo nishka chami menu, Berecha Anias Rabbi Eliezer, Berecha Shabbat Shalom Chagigit. So, someone who's clearly not Shabbos observant came to Rabbi Eliezer's home. Imagine today would be pulled up in his car and he said, Oh, good Shabbos, Rabbi. And he gave him a wonderful, warm Shabbos blessing. So, it was clear that he knew that it was Shabbos. Rabbi Eliezer lo rutz lo vayashes ani. Rabbi Eliezer did not want to embarrass the poor person. Vilchain ha'alim e no michil al hashabbos. And therefore, he turned away. He didn't look at this blatant desecration of the Sabbath. And he invited him to a meal. And he gave him all the wonderful things he had to offer. And even after Shabbos, when the guest left, he had no ill feelings towards him. But he had only warm love for another Jew. And he went and they parted in peace. Not only that, he said, any time you're passing through here in town, you can always be a guest in my home. At that moment, Eliyahu Navi revealed himself, and he told him, that in the merit of his love of the Jewish people, and in the merit of his bringing in guests, he would have a child in his old age, who would open up and enlighten the eyes of the Jewish people. Halohu Rabbi Yisrael Baal Shem Tov. Of course, this turns out to be the Baal Shem Tov himself, Rabbi Yisrael. The founder of Hasidus, the Hasidic movement, traces all the way back, and then the Hasidic movement himself traces back to this mitzvah of Hachnasas Orchem. So great is this mitzvah that we have upon us, and Baruch Hashem, we have many opportunities to fulfill the mitzvah on a regular basis in different formats so we'll spend a few days looking through this wonderful mitzvah through the teachings in the eyes of Rebbe Yezer Malameh Shlita thank you again for joining us on this journey hope everyone has a wonderful week ahead and we will see you here next time God willing have a wonderful day <laughs>